Praise be to the triune God. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome all of you to today's Array's Worship Service. Let us bow our heads and pray. Lord our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for you have given us another opportunity to come to your presence and worship in truth and spirit. Lord, as we come before your presence, Lord, help us to worship you in truth and spirit and help us to experience your real presence in our life. Lord, bless this worship, bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Let us rise for the liturgy. the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as in this beginning, there shall be forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. So as it has come, as come again, the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy art thou, O God, holy art thou, mighty Lord, holy art thou, immortal Lord, O Lord, the Messiah, who is crucified for us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God, holy art thou, mighty Lord, holy art thou, immortal Lord, O Lord, the Messiah is crucified for us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God, holy art thou, mighty Lord, holy art thou, immortal Lord, O Lord, the Messiah is crucified for us, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord, have compassion and mercy upon us. O Lord, accept our praise and worship and have mercy upon us. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, Creator of all. Glory be to you, o King the Messiah. For your compassion on your sinful servants, bless us, O Lord. Our Father in heaven, all of your name, may your kingdom come, may we live on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as for those who sin against us. Do not bring us in time of trial, but let us in the one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours and forever. Amen. We praise you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for empowering us and continue the healing ministry in your holy name. As a species, O Lord, we stand powerless and helpless before you. We are up against COVID-19, for which there is no medicine that cures and no medicine that prevents. Lord, why on earth you touch the sick to heal them? Here we stand, O Lord, forbidden to touch the corona patient. We recall the exhortation of St. James the Apostle to the elders of the church to anoint the sick with oil and heal them. Here, O Lord, our elders, the clergy, stand helpless because they are also forbidden from touching the corona patient and are vulnerable to being affected. While human hands fail to heal, O Lord, we know that nothing prevents you from healing and your hands are never too short. We pray to you with a broken heart to stretch forth out your invincible hands and touch the millions of victims of corona spread across the continents. Be compassionate, O Lord, to all the victims of the pandemic, for they all bear your image and were all redeemed by the passion you endured on the cross. Stretch out your hands, O Lord, to lovingly touch and embrace the victims of corona and to bring healing to them in body mind and soul, we offer all praise and thanks to you, and to your Father and the Holy Spirit, now and all the times and all seasons. Amen. Let us confess our sins before the merciful God. Merciful Lord, we confess that we sinned against you in thy word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, Help us amend what we have, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Merciful Lord, we confess that we often fail to be an obedient church. We have not done your will, we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love. Forgive us, we pray, and free us by your joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned, have wandered from your ways, have wasted of your gifts, have forgotten your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. 
Forgive our sins, help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us praise God to the Almighty God. Lord God, we thank you for your watchful eye that continually watches over us and keeps us safe despite the pain and suffering that goes on all around us. We thank you for your abundant grace and mercy that keeps away from danger and roots our feet on our path. We pray that you impart in us the spirit of love to comfort to those who are in pain and always remind us of your many blessings so that we will never forget to praise your name for all eternity. We trust in your faithfulness to carry us over the devastation of illness and diseases. We trust in your almighty power to protect us from the walls of Satan. We trust that no matter the situation, you are the almighty Lord, and you will not leave your people behind. We pray that the Holy Spirit will comfort to all who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. Help them to know that you are with them, and that there is nothing you can, you cannot do. We believe in one true God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten Father, before our worlds, light of light, very God of very God, me God and not me, be us us in the Father, from whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was carnal by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified for us in the days of Pontius Pilate, suffering and died and was buried. Third day he rose again by his own will, ascended into heaven, and since then at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge, both living and the dead, and the skin of the enemy and all in. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father, Son is given, worship and glorified, who is by the prophets and the apostles. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we now draw baptism for the remission of our sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead, and the new life of the world to come. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Bible reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with a sober judgment in accordance with faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. It is, if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. Here ends the Bible reading. Oh,
am very happy to welcome today's speaker, Andrew Wardley. As you all know, Andrew is a very active member of our youth fellowship and also he is a leader of our English choir. Now I welcome Andrew for today's message. All right, guys, good morning. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, it is such a pleasure to be able to come here and speak in front of you uh, guys today. Um, I know that we are all eagerly waiting to get back to church. I know that we are all super excited um, for what is to come. I know it's really hard to just be at home with everything that's going on, but I hope that you guys are all safe. I hope that you guys are all, you know, taking all the precautions you need to be taking and that we're all able to get through this together. Um, I also know that uh, we are, for the most part, going to be streaming this during, you know, breakfast time and stuff like that. And I know that there's going to be plenty of distractions going on around you. I hope that you know that I have my own distractions too. Dogs are right here laying on the bed, so I'm trying to keep an eye on them. But hopefully we're all able to uh, get through this together. Hopefully they stay asleep just like they are right now. And uh, we're able just to enjoy this time that we have together. So let's go ahead. We'll dive right into it. And let's uh, learn a little bit more about God today, right? So I want to start with a little bit of a story. And so um, I know we've all been home. I know we've all, for the most part, been um, just taking this time, whether that's, you know, reading or you know, doing something productive. I, for one, have been semi-productive. Yes, I've had school, but the rest of the time I'm not on school, I've definitely been wasting my time. Whether that's scrolling on Facebook, Instagram, just kind of, you know, doing whatever, laying in bed. It is so easy for us just to be lazy during that time. And um, I'm definitely at fault for when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but one thing that was so funny that I realized was I was kind of counting everything up and um, kind of looked at my total friends and followers and I was like, man, over the years, kind of gained a few followers here and there. I was pretty happy about that. I was like, okay, got a little friendship here and there. But I don't mean that in a boastful way. Let me kind of explain why I thought that, you know. I was going through and I saw one of my friends who I had gone to school with and they were already on like one of their first kids they were married and stuff like that and i was like oh this is cool they're moving through life this is great you know happy for them awesome um and then i have other friends who are getting into grad school which man pray for me y'all hopefully that's me too uh, anytime now um and then of course i have my other friends new job new car like all that kind of stuff and man i am so happy like that is absolutely great um, or I got other people who I know are traveling and they're going about and doing everything right now And I'm like man if I wasn't working I'd be right there with you, but unfortunately you can't be doing all that So um, it was just so crazy just seeing how everyone's doing and uh, people that kind of grew up with people that I knew in middle school high school still kind of keep up with them to this day, so it's pretty incredible but what's so crazy to me at the same time is Yes, like we've kind of gained all these followers and that we have a huge group of people that we um, are always around or that we say that we know, but how much about them do you really know? Like, think about it. If you're thinking about all these followers that you have, whether that's 500 followers, 1,000 followers, 1,500 followers, like all this kind of stuff, like all your friends, which I, mean, I, I would not know, I'm not that cool. But for people who get to that point, it's like, how many of them do you really know? How do you keep up with that many people? Um, and so you know of them, but you don't really know them. But let's flip it around on its head, right? Let's think about it a little bit deeper. You know of them, but they only know of you. Because how many of them can say they truly know you? How many of them can say that they know who you are or anything like that? And of course, the other great thing that, or I guess great thing, but who knows if it's really great, all we see is the good. You know, a lot of times where we're on Facebook, Instagram and stuff like that, you never really see the bad. You always see the high points in life and you see a great scrapbook of achievements and moments, but you will never see the low points. And that's a lot of what life really is, to be honest. Like, let's think about it, right? A lot of times when we're going through life, we're going through, um, yes, great moments, but those low moments really do outweigh the bad. And it's really hard to go through all that alone. A lot of times we're always seeking for just grabbing our friends and grabbing people who are close to us. And that's definitely something that we want to encourage. And that's what leads us to our topic today. And that is about community. And so um, what is community? Uh, let's take that uh, first. Let's talk about what it is. So community is a small group of trusted believers radically pursuing Christ together. 
And so let's think about that. Uh, from the earliest times, uh, when we think about, you know, community, um, I can think about Jesus for sure. And uh, we'll get back to Jesus later. But but Jesus, uh, you can even see him Sermon on the Mount preaching to thousands and thousands of people. But where did he always go? He always went back to the disciples, those solid 12 that followed him. You know, in the same way, we are called to have community as well. And so that community, what does that look like? It looks like the people that are closest to you, that you love, that are running hard after Christ, hopefully just like you are. Um, and those people right there, those are the ones that are truly there for you. Those are the ones who want to be there for you. And there's so much of life that we're supposed to be sharing with them. And um, they're not just placed in our lives for no random reason. God places people that he wants to be put around you and goes and speaks through them to you and wants to be able to convene and commune through them to you and so that's a lot of what community is so again community is a small group of trusted believers so people that you trust people that love you and you love radically pursuing christ together and that's the key word there because a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is based off of that idea that we're running after christ hard and we're running after christ hard together so uh, when it comes to that, again, we talk about, um, you know, a lot of what community is. So we're going to talk about um, a few things. We'll talk about, first of all, we said what is community, but why do we need community? What does community look like? And of course, the ultimate community. And we're going to get to that at the very end today. So let's talk about it. Why do we need community? What is like, what's the big hype about it? What's the hubbub? What's going on with community these days? Why is it so important? Because it's so easy for us to be like, man, I don't need community. What do they ever do for me, right? All of these people these days, they're just backstabbers and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't need anybody. I'm going to do this myself. And that is great until everything starts to happen. And you know exactly what I mean. When that weight just gets heavy and heavy and heavy. But Maybe you don't know what I mean. Let me illustrate a little bit for you, right? So think about The Lion King. Everyone knows The Lion King, right? Everyone has seen The Lion King. We all know how it goes. And we know one of the high points of that movie is when Simba is going through the tall grass and he's saying, oh, I just can't wait to be king, right? He's like super happy about it. He's like, hey, I'm feeling myself. I know that I'm going to be king one day. I don't need none of y'all. Zazu, get back. I don't need you, big boy. I got this on my own. And where does he go? He gets that whole tip. Hey, I'm going to go to the elephant graveyard, right? I'm a boss. I don't need anybody. I can do this. And so he gets there and you can tell as he's getting closer and closer, things aren't always as great as they seem. And so little by little, he gets more and more scared and he starts getting into the area. And of course, what happens when he gets there? One hyena comes out. Another hyena comes out, more and more hyenas start coming out, and before he knows it, he's surrounded by a pack of hyenas. And it seems like someone who is so confident, someone who is fit to be the king, the next king of the jungle, right? That king was reduced to nothing, basically. Someone who had was full of hope, full of confidence, was reduced to hopelessness and just despair. And it wasn't until his community, I guess you could say, if you do count Mufasa as community, but Mufasa comes in, Zazu comes in, saves the day, gets the hyenas up out of there, and he lets them know who's the real boss. You know what I mean? Which is great and all, but think about it. There's no way that Simba could have gone through that and survived on his own. There's no way. As great and as strong as a lion is, when a pack of hyenas gets around a lion, they will always crumble. There's just no way around it. In the same way, that's what we go through with life. Think about it, right? You can be as confident as you want to be. You can go through so much, but when that wave hits you, or when you think about those troubles that hit you, it's in those moments where you need to have some people by you, you need to have other lines by you to keep the pack going, to keep this going. And that's what this is all about. So um, we can't do life alone. This whole thing is I can, I can do this, I can do that, I don't need community. It's all fine and dandy, but if you think about it, we're all just one moment away from being on our knees. We are all just one bad thing away from being reduced to nothingness. And that's the whole point. Why would you want to go through that alone? Why would you want to experience that kind of pain or suffering by yourself? Go through community. We are built to go through community together and go through this life together. All right, so we talked about why we need community. So let's kind of go into what does community look like? And so now we'll kind of dive into the Bible. So if you're, your Bibles, go ahead and grab those now. Uh, we'll be going through a few verses, not a lot today, um, but definitely a few that are pretty powerful. So um, we're gonna start at the end of Galatians chapter five. Um, we'll do the beginning of chapter six, then we'll look into Hebrews a little bit as well. So just kind of keep that in your head. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll talk about what does community look like. I'm going to give you three points, okay? So here we go. We're going to start end of chapter 5, verse 26. It says, 
let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. And so the reason why this is important is because think about it, oftentimes when we're going through, um, whether that's someone who is trying to help us or someone is trying to correct us or um, just out of love, trying to show us the correct path, what do we do? We don't always respond in the best way. I mean, I'll be honest, like I know for a fact, there are days where I definitely do not respond out of love like I'm supposed to. Um, and so what this is saying is let's not become conceited. And that means let's not think highly of ourselves. Let's not think to a point where we're better than other people, or let's not think that we're better than the law or anything like that to where, oh, I don't need this. I don't need that. I got it. I can do this myself. No, we're not called to do that uh, or provoke one another. So when that comes to someone says, oh, hey, like, man, I, I just want to tell you out of love. I don't think you're doing this right. What do you mean? I'm not doing this right. You're not doing this right. That's what that's kind of getting into. And of course, the last part about envying each other. Well, how can you say that you have all this stuff? So, I mean, your point opinion is not even valid, like things like that. So that's kind of where this is getting at and that we um, have to accept correction with like with love from community. And so that means that we don't um, give back in terms of like anger or resentment. We receive with love so we can give it back with love. Let's go to chapter six, uh, verse one. So we'll keep going. It says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the spirit should restore that person gently. And so let's, let's go back. It doesn't say you should restore that person by beating them on the head with the Bible. No, it doesn't say that. Um, you should restore that person by yelling at them. No, that's not what it says either. It says you should live by a spirit and restore that person gently. And that's the first point is that we as believers, we are to restore other believers from sin gently. Um, so I don't know what you're going through in your life. I know that we've all been caught up in sin before. I know we've all done things that we're not supposed to. And it's really hard to confess that to other people. It's really, really hard. And when it comes to being on the other end of that, when you are trying to help someone see that, it's even harder to call them out on it, to be honest. It's really hard to tell them that, hey, like, I just want to let you know, like, what you're doing right now doesn't really align with the Bible. I want to be there for you and help you through that. A lot of times we often either keep our mouths shut or we go to other people about it. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to go out and do that, which is what the next point is even saying. It says, but watch yourselves so that, or you may also be tempted. That's what the second part of that verse says watch yourselves or you also may be tempted and that's so weird because we think like oh i mean if they're doing sin why would i want to do the same sin that they're doing i just caught it that makes no sense no it's not saying that it's saying watch yourselves or you may also be tempted to react in a bad way so it means like reacting like in anger or reacting um like in gossip or wanting to go tell other people about what that person did that's not what we're meant to do. We're supposed to gently restore that person. So that means um, instead of poking and prodding them and getting mad at them, it's, hey, come here, let me show you the right way. Um, I know what you did was wrong. I love you. Let me tell you that there's nothing that you can do to separate you from Christ. Let's bring you back. Let's bring you back to Christ. Let's realign your heart. Let's get you back to where you need to be at. That is how we gently bring someone back to Christ. And so a great illustration for that is we are called to be road signs, not police officers. Think about it. We're called to be road signs. So what does a road sign do, right? The road sign oftentimes just points. It points you in the right direction and says, hey, this is the way to go. If you choose to go that way, it'll be good for you. If you don't go that way, it's probably going to be bad. That's what a road sign does. We're not called to be the police who are giving the tickets out. That's not what we're, we're supposed to. We're supposed to be the road signs. And so let's continue on. So the next part of this is saying, um, this is verse two in uh, chapter six of Galatians, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Um, I want to talk about that first part, which is carry each other's burdens. And that's actually my second point. So um, we, as when we live in community, we're meant to carry each other's burdens. It's really important that we do that. Um, I know a lot of times like we're told, hey, don't say this to other people, like don't do that or keep this to yourself or whether that's like someone else telling you that or you feel it in yourself, you feel ashamed to tell someone what you're going through. Um, I hear you, I feel your pain, but I want you to know that when you go to other believers in Christ, I promise you there is no sin that is uncommon that they probably haven't done themselves. Um, and especially if someone who believes in Christ and knows that the grace that there is in that, they know for a fact that they're here to love you and bring you up. And so they're here to carry that with you. And um, this is really ironic because in verse five, it says for each one should carry their own load. So it's um, carry each other's burdens, but also carry your own load. 
little bit of a different deal. And so sometimes when we think of a load, we think of something like heavy, kind of like a burden itself, but this load is a little bit different. This load is meant to say like, this is like something that you are carrying your own that's um, not as heavyweight. This is more like your own, think of like a backpack. This is what that kind of load is. We carry each other's burdens, we take it from them, and then we make it our load. We carry it like our own backpack because we can take that. Um, continue on. Um, and so, like I said, well, we carry each other's burdens. We don't need to tell the whole world about what's going on, but with the closest people who are also running hard after God, let it be fully known. Let's go through that together. Let's go through the highs and lows. I know that's scary for you. I know that's really hard for a lot of people, but think about it like this. I know that you don't want to share what's going on in your life. Let me celebrate with you today what there is to celebrate. And I know that's some joyous occasions. Let's do that together. But on the days where you're going through some hard stuff, let's go through the sadness together as well because I want to be there for you. It's as easy as that. We'll celebrate the highs in life and the lows in life together, just like a roller coaster. We'll go through all of it together. So let's go ahead. We're going to turn now to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. And so verse 24, it starts like this. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And so um, my last point for you guys and what community looks like is that we encourage one another and counsel one another with scripture. And so um, when we think about what that looks like, how are, what are you doing in your daily lives with the people who are closest to you? How do you encourage them? Um, it could be as simple as, hey man, like I just wanna let you know that you're doing a really great job. I know that you've been struggling lately, but I just wanna remind you of the truth that um, there's nothing that, that you're going through that God won't be able to get you through. Um, there's so many different things that you can just say to encourage those people who are close to you. Remind them with scripture, true verses, um, whether that's you know in the Bible where Jesus says, um, in this world you will struggle, but take heart for I've overcome the world. Um, he gives so many different pieces and truths throughout scripture where it just reminds people that God is with you and God's not going to leave you. Um, let's encourage, let's move forward and let's uh, run through this. So, um, and then the other part of that, which is really important is that let's not give up meeting together. Community is hard, but I'll make it even easier for you. Life is hard. And I would much rather go through community than go through my life alone. And I know that it's a lot easier said than done, which is why we're talking about it right now. But um, I encourage you just continue to press forward with your community, even though things get busy and it's easy to get caught up in the schedules. Let's make that time for one another and be able to run through this life together. So as you go towards the end of this, um, for a lot of you, this sermon applies really well. You'll be able to apply this to your daily life and be on, and you'll be great to go. Um, but for others of you, as you're listening to this sermon, you have a bigger community that you need to see first, and that's community with Jesus. And as I kind of think about it, I think about maybe two types of people who could be hearing this sermon. And so one group of you, you might have heard who Jesus is before. And, you know, maybe you're like, man, I don't really need Jesus, or I don't really care about all this Christianity or anything like that. Um, or maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's, uh, maybe I do need Jesus, but I just don't think he'd ever take me in. Um, I don't, there's, I've done way too much. I'm, I'm too bad. There's no way that God could love me. Um, and I just want to say, I have some good news for you. Um, that good news is that Jesus does love you. Um, Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with you. And there's nothing that you can do that would keep you from him. There's nothing, there's no things you could have done, no deeds you could have done that could separate you from him. And he's inviting you to have that community with him, not just now, uh, but in heaven and forevermore. And that's good news. And you should definitely take that. Um, but maybe you've never heard about Jesus before. Maybe you're someone who um, just never got around to it, or maybe you're hearing about this type of good news for the first time. And if you've been listening to this, or you're hearing this right now, and you're thinking that, you know, this message is trying to talk to you, um, let me just affirm that like I am trying to talk to you and God is trying to talk to you And I just want to let you know that Jesus does love you as well You might not have heard the good news But I want to tell you about that good news right now is that Jesus died for your sins Died for my sins died for everyone's sins and he wants to have that personal relationship with you And he's inviting you to to sit at his table and feast with him and have community with him as well And so in conclusion um, we are called to live in authentic community with each other, um, with true believers, believers who are radically pursuing Christ, people who are running hard after God, people that, that you trust, people that you love. And um, this is a small group of people, aside from the many friends and people that we might have, this is your small group where you and other believers can restore each other from sin gently, carry each other's burdens, and encourage and counsel through the scripture. 
And so as we go and as we uh, go about our lives, I hope that you guys would look into your inner circles and that this inner circle is not just a place where we're just doing common talk and we're doing little things like that, but this now becomes your place of community.
Let's bow our head for a word of prayer, dear Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, dear. Help us as we all gather here to come and worship your name, dear Lord. Um, help um, each and every one of us that we're able to attend to, um, this week's arise, Lord. Help us to continue to uh, grow together during this tough time, dear Lord. Especially thank you, Angie, for giving us a wonderful message about um, community, dear Lord. I know through this tough time, Lord, that we're not able to see each other, dear Lord. But help us to be able to be held accountable and talk to people that we normally don't talk to, dear Lord. Especially help us as we continue to go through this COVID season, dear Lord. Um, help each church member, dear Lord, especially help all those that are about to head back to school, dear Lord, whether it's online or in campus, dear Lord, and help all the working people, dear Lord, that are still working, dear Lord, especially help us to continue to do your ministry in your name, dear Lord, and help us to have a blessed week, dear Lord, rash and precious name, amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us today, especially this time. Let me thank our today's speaker, Andrew Marquis, and all those who participated in this worship service, and all those who provide their services for the technical support, and each and every one of us. May God bless us all. Be safe. Thank you. See you next time.